when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, what it's saying is, is Father, we're going to follow your son and become like him. We're going to follow him in obedience. When we fail, we'll confess our failures. We'll repent of our sin. It means that we become part of the body of Christ, that we follow him the best we can. And so as we uh, baptize these this morning, it's not a, a, they haven't arrived, okay? And I'm going to say this to all my brothers and sisters out there, neither of you, okay? We are on a journey. It's a journey that in, for some of them is going to be marked today as the day that they prob- publicly proclaim that journey. Jesus said, if you will confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father, And that's what this is, that confession before our church body. It's our responsibility to help them grow, to be willing to mentor them and to step up and fill the gap and the void that's there. We're celebrating something, guys, today that most churches, okay, to see 12 people baptized, I think is what, if I, my count is right, but I'm ADD. It's nearly 1,200 as a pastor, okay? Um, but to see 12 people baptized in one service, okay, most churches won't see that happen in 10 years. God is blessing us, and we have a responsibility. Not the pastors, not our youth leader. We're seeing people baptized from our children's department, our youth department, and adults baptized today. God is pouring his blessing out upon us. Let us not take lightly that. Let us stand and hoop and holler and celebrate and jump up and down and take seriously our job to mentor and to encourage and to love and to be there. Dominic, brother? No, no cannonballs. Okay. Okay. Uh. So this, this is our brother Dominic, okay? And uh, we're going to baptize Dominic, and then Dominic um, is going to help baptize his two daughters, okay? And uh, okay, to, bab- to baptize adult men is something that's rare. And I'm proud to be able to be here. I've made it clear to Dominic, and as I will make it clear to every man here, you're to lead your family, to lead them in the way of Christ. Dominic's beginning his journey. I was there when we shot that video, and he sat at the kitchen table. And, you know, I mean, when I say a tough man, I mean a tough man that shed tears and cried out to Jesus. That's why we're here. It's a new life. It's a new beginning. He's going to be buried in Christ and raised to do new life in Christ. That's the picture that is painted through baptism. And we need to celebrate and we need to rock this building with every baptism. Amen? Okay, Dominic, who's your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Dominic, my brother, upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. All right, stand right over here, brother. Okay, Miss Lexi, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, this is... If, you, if you're questioning, Dominic's girls are twins. So, okay. Help me. Pray. Freya. I, Lisa has an Aunt Farah, and it's Freya, so it's just kind of, I get hung up on it. Freya, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. 
Upon your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, hey, this is Max, okay? And Max is my barber. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay? You might want to avoid his shop, okay? <laughs> Okay. Uh, no, uh, Max has been a friend and it has been was my barber when I needed one. Um, but Max, who is your Lord and Savior? That would be Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, brother. I am so blessed, so blessed to do this. Uh, Max, upon your profession of faith, my brother, as Jesus Christ is your Savior, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> But this is Leslie, and Leslie is one of those who's known Christ for uh, quite some time, okay? But she's come to understand the importance of obedience. And it doesn't matter when you begin to be obedient, just start being obedient. And these are the first steps that we take. And the great news is, is that uh, when it's all said and done, uh, we also get to baptize her daughter, Mackenzie. So it's a blessing to be able to do this and to be a part of it. Leslie, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Leslie, my sister, upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Godly parents and grandparents leading uh, their children. And this is Mackenzie. Mackenzie, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Mackenzie, upon your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Okay, so this is, you almost self-baptized there. <laughs> okay, uh, this is uh, uh, the Stevens family. And uh, it, we have this strange little thing going on in our church. We have all kinds of twins, okay? I mean, we have a plethora of them. And so Kelly and uh, Brian are going to baptize uh, their two uh, children this morning. And uh, i got to be honest, it blessed my heart to have two of them give their uh, little testimony uh, in baseball uniform and a softball uniform, okay? It made me feel really good. So, okay, are you ready, brother? Okay. Chance, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. We baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Just stand right here. And here's their beautiful daughter, Carly. Carly, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Amen. Carly, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Love you, sweetheart. Okay. You ever have that ADD moment where you forget something? Oh, but and this is the problem, okay? Uh, I, I I know this gentleman just as grandpa more often than not, okay? <laughs> so um, help me, Papa James. Yeah, Papa James, okay? And Justin. Justin. I was going to say Dustin, and I knew that was wrong, and I would get me in trouble, okay? <laughs> Um, listen, it doesn't matter how I know you. What matters is, is that Jesus knows you and you know him. Amen? Amen? Okay. Godly grandparents helping to raise their, uh, their grandchildren. Guys, I, I'm finding this out that my role as a grandparent 
is even sometimes more important than my role was as a father. And it blesses me to have a godly grandfather and grandmother that's sitting out there to uh, be able to lead their, children, their grandchildren to Christ and to be part of that. So, Justin, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. We baptize you, brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Oh, there's little ducks and stuff. Yeah, there's ducks and stuff in the bottom. Somebody in our church had a sense of humor. So, uh, come here, Miss Abby. Okay. You know what I found interesting? Everybody did a 30-second one except our two teenagers when they did their testimonies. Okay? And you guys had something to say. Okay? No. Listen, this is, this, is, this is Mike, okay? Mike is our youth leader. Him and his beautiful wife, Katie. Okay? Yeah, and yeah, much better. She'd stand up, but she's a little gimpy. I know, she's gimpy. She just had surgery. But, like I said, we're seeing it in every area of our church body is those that are choosing to follow Christ. So, Abby, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Abby, we baptize you upon your profession of faith in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to say this, doesn't he have the perfect head, okay? Look at the haircut. This is a man's man. This is the real McCoy right here. Okay, again, we're baptizing a twin, okay? I'm sorry. If you heard her testimony... She says, God doesn't always lead you down the path you think you need to go or you want to go. But it blesses me that Lauren knows that God has a plan for her life and has planned to prosper you and to do great things through you. It's a blessing to have your dad that's going to be a godly father, has been, okay? Because we can't take lightly our youth. 80% of our youth group statistically will walk away from Christ after they graduate. And I can tell you why they do it. Because they don't see Christ in us. We have to be that body. We have to be that church. That our youth, when they graduate... Don't leave Jesus, but just become more and more like him. Sweetheart, who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Upon your profession of faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us in Mark chapter 10 that Jesus, and I can see him, you know, sitting like on the Mount of Olives or in a city square. And moms were bringing their children to him. And the disciples got irritated. You know, Jesus had better things to do than to hang out with little kids and moms. Well, Kirsten's rededicated her life to Christ. And she's making a commitment this morning by dedicating her son. What she's making the commitment to is to raise him up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. We have a responsibility, not just our children's department, but we as the body of Christ, to love and courage to support and help, okay? Not only 
And help me with the name again. Chiron. Chiron. I want to put a T on it. <laughs> Chiron. It's Chiron. To help raise Chiron. But I, I didn't know, and I may get crucified for this later, but to help our single moms. Okay? They carry a burden that we really don't understand. And they're part of our church family. And we need to take that seriously. Because there's other single moms out there that just need help and feel judged when they come into a church. And this is not a place of judgment. This is a place of restoration and freedom. Amen. So let's pray. Let's pray. Okay, We're not just praying for uh, Kirsten, but we are praying for Kyron. Got it. Okay? I'll never forget it. So let's pray together, okay, as her family. Father, we praise you and we thank you. We thank you for Kyron, Father. He is, was made in the image of God, wonderfully created, Father. And I pray, Father God, that this young man, by the witness and the leading of his mother and his church family, Father, would come to know you as Lord and Savior at an early age, Father. That he would grow to be a godly man. That he would grow to love you with all his heart, soul, strength, and mind. That, Father, that you would be with Kirsten, Father, as she raises him. Give her wisdom and understanding. Father, help her to be strong when she needs to be strong. And to be soft as a mother can be when she needs to be, Father. I pray, Father, that you'd help us as her church family. To love, support, encourage, Father to do what's necessary to help them become the family that you desire them to become. And Father, we ask your blessing on them. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. Amen. amen.